Welcome back to the GTN show and today we are debating, debating and debating. Yeah, should Ironman be refunding athletes or just communicating more? Have the professional triathletes organization saved pro triathlon racing? Should carbon running spikes be legal? Well, on top of all that debating, we also have some exciting results from Challenge Wanaka over the weekend and also the ITU Winter Triathlon World Cup. Right then, let's start this show by addressing what many have called an empty message from Ironman CEO Andrew Messick last week. Now, in case you missed it, Ironman posted up a video on their various social media platforms addressing Ironman racing and the pandemic. Now, I've got to be totally honest, I watched it and I didn't really come away any clearer, any wiser, or any more reassured. Now, I don't expect Ironman to be able to obviously wave a magic wand, fix things, and give us a definite answer. But I guess I was just expecting and hoping a little bit more. Now, I can totally understand a lot of athletes out there who've entered races, they're seriously out of pocket and they've had very little communication from Ironman. They also were left feeling, well, like they didn't get very much from that video. Yeah, it was definitely one that I was watching till the end, sort of going, okay, okay, like get to the point here. He did spend quite a, a great length actually explaining how we as athletes and them as organizers are guests in these host towns and cities, which you know completely makes sense. We are sort of invading somewhere, so to speak. And as a result of that, they're in constant communication with the host to check that, you know, that what status they are at with the pandemic. Because obviously all around the world, everywhere's at different status and it's, com it's continually changing and that's beyond everyone's control. But they are obviously respecting how the host are, are coping and you know, if there's, they're struggling with the COVID pandemic, they're not gonna try and go ahead and have their event there, which you know is, is, is a good thing to hear. Which is fine. And I think most of us out there are sympathetic of that. But it's more when you think about the cost of these races. So typically an Ironman will cost you around 600 to $700. A 70.3 will cost you around $300 for the entry. And then of course, many of you out there may have entered multiple races. That seriously starts to add up. Now, if Ironman were to refund all of these entries, it's very likely they go bust and fold overnight, which I'm sure, again, many of you understand and appreciate, but it's more the way in which they have dealt with it or not dealt with it, which really is getting under people's skin because people are just have no idea, they can't get hold of Ironman, there's no communication as to what's going on with their rescheduled or postponed event, and that is seriously annoying. Yeah, and that's one of the biggest issues about that postponing, because until the event is officially cancelled or postponed, you can't move your own entry without having a cost, which is their normal standard procedure, which normally makes sense, but it's kind of exacerbated by the fact that, as we've already touched on, these are only being announced really close to the event. So yes, then you would be able to defer your entry to the next year's race, but you've probably already paid for your travel, probably already paid for your accommodation, a lot of which you'll end up just losing. It comes back to this lack of information and communication, which unfortunately this video did very little to address and was ultimately what everyone was hoping for. And I do appreciate the CEO of Ironman taking his time to sit down and talk through all of this, but sadly it didn't really go down very well. And I think ultimately a lot of people have just been pushed to the point that they just want their refund now. Mm. And it's hard to compare because obviously Ironman are the biggest triathlon organiser out there. But the smaller events, you know, we haven't heard or seen complaints with the way they're dealing with stuff. So we would love to know what your thoughts are. Do you think we should even expect a refund or is it actually okay that they keep our money but they just communicate with us better? Let us know and get involved in the comment section below. Right then, on with the rest of the try news and we have Another question for you, would triathlon be the same without the pro field? Now picture this, you head to the Ironman World Championships or you're tuning into the Ironman World Championships and there is no pro field or you go to do an Ironman event say and again there's no pro field. Would that bother you? Well the reason we're talking about this is because no surprises really pro triathletes have taken a pretty large income hit, haven't they? There's been very few events happening, so there's been very little when it comes to the prize purse available. Now, Torsten Rad of Tri Rating, who, as we all know, is loves crunching the numbers and going into detail on this, well, he's compiled a bit of a list of what he reckons athletes have earned over the last year. Yeah, now Torsten is a bit of a guru here, and according to him, Ironman have paid out just $200,000 at full distance races in 2020, and 234000 at 70.3 races 
prices, which is a 92% and 89% decline from a previous year. Challenge paid out just 16,000, which is a 98% reduction. Super League paid out 50,000 at just one event, which is a 95% reduction in total prize purse. And World Triathlon Series paid out 250,000, including its bonus pool, which is an 89% reduction from 2019. Oh my goodness, that's a lot of numbers, isn't mm. it? Um, there were a few positives, so a few extra income streams, but much sort of lower, I guess, on the maybe slightly less significant scale. So you might remember Ironman doing their VR pro races. Well, apparently athletes were given around $1,500 for an appearance, but it seemed to be just one race per athlete. Then there's also been the Zwift Z Pro Series, which is still going on, um, where athletes are apparently getting an appearance fee and prize money, but we don't know the exact number. And then on top of that, um, World Triathlon did actually give prize purses for their lower tier for the World Cup races as well. But the big player that has arguably kept many of the pros afloat this year is the professional triathletes organization, the PTO. Now they have funded and put prize money forwards in some smaller PTO backed independent events around the world earlier this year. They also had a whopping prize purse at the PTO championships in Daytona, plus a $2.5 million bonus pool that they distributed amongst athletes based upon their current rankings also earlier last year. In total, that is $3.8 million distributed to 296 athletes. It is like the fairy godmother, isn't yeah. it? Of triathlon, really. I mean, we know that some athletes would have been able to survive on their sponsorship, that deals that have continued, but even those are now starting to come to an end. But it's more likely those newer pros or those lower level pros who would have really suffered without this extra help. And even someone like Cody Beals, who's a very established athlete, has stated that you know he would have struggled. And sadly, we have seen some athletes you know, pull the plug and sort of retire from the sport as result of this and it's the future generation of pros and without them what would triathlon look like if there were no pro fields racing what would you guys think do let us know because it's yeah quite an interesting topic well sticking with the theme of events being postponed one of the most iconic and popular iron distance races has to be challenge roth well sadly that they have just announced that it's no longer going to happen in july it was due to be on the 4th and 5th of july this year it's going to be moved till september the end of september but there are a few options that come with this athletes have the choice of obviously taking that deferral to september or going and having their entry move straight through to next year it's going to be the same time next year beginning of July or even having a refund obviously minus the processing fee but on top of that it's just quite a nice sort of the, you get the feel that they're really thinking about the athletes here because they've mentioned yes partly to do with travel restrictions they've had to move it and obviously due to Covid but also the concern that some athletes won't have been able to train I mean still in the UK our swimming pools aren't open for example and if you've got to do a 3.8k you probably need a good few months of doing a bit of training. Of course there's a slightly different message to another one that we may have heard recently anyway moving on um, and we have one last debate for you. Sorry, this show is full of them today. Um, but carbon spikes, yay or nay? Now, currently it's only Nike and New Balance that officially have a carbon track spike. There are other prototypes out there that have been spotted but records seem to be falling in these carbon track spikes. Now, recently we saw the men's 5,000 meter and 10,000 meter records fall, the women's 5,000 meter record fall, and then also this last week, we saw a jaw-dropping sight. Elliot Giles, who has never actually reached a world final, posting the second fastest indoor 800 meter time, one minute, 43 seconds 0.63 to smash Sebco's UK record and all of which were set in carbon spikes. Well there's some more interesting or exciting running coming from Ben True, pro triathlete Sarah True's husband. Now this was for the 10k. Now he was sponsored by Sarconi who don't currently have a carbon running spike and now as an unsponsored athlete he was free to choose and he went for unsurprisingly a pair of Nikes. Well he smashed his old PB. He ran a time of 27 14.9 in the 10k 10 track meet getting underneath the US Olympic qualifying time and his previous time was 27.41.17 so almost 25 seconds quicker at the age of 35 which is rather respectable. Yeah now we're not questioning the huge performances and the efforts that have gone into that but is there an element of super shoe carbon fiber doping going on? Well we'd be interested to hear your thoughts let us know in the comment section down below. 
On to race news now, and no surprises, we are going back to the Southern Hemisphere, who are basking not only in summer, but also in less COVID restrictions than we have. That said, it was Challenge Wanaka over the weekend, and New Zealand has actually moved up to a level two restrictions. And that has had an effect on sporting events, as they have said that any non-professionals are not allowed to travel to an event that has more than 100 competitors. However, the pro field were still allowed to go ahead. Mm, which caused a few issues. Anyway, um, in the men's race, we saw an exciting performance from Carl Smith, who, well, continued his impressive unbeaten streak over the half Ironman distance. He led out the swim with a 40 second advantage, extended that to three minutes coming into T2 and then was chased hard yet again by Braden Curry and it came agonizingly close down to just 13 seconds. So Carl Smith took the win, Braden Curry in second and then Jack Moody in third. Well, it wasn't quite so close on the women's side. The win went to Hannah Wells who took it by 10 minutes ahead of Rebecca Clark in second and Maeve Kennedy Birdsell took third. And then we had the ITU Winter Triathlon World Cup, which took place in Asiago in Italy. And well, the women's was won by a local favourite, Sandra Mehrhofer, and then the men's was won by Russian Pavel Andri. And of course, we had another week. We're on week three now, actually, of the Z Pro Tri Series, which is following the format of bike, run, bike. And this week, it was a hill climb to start on the bike, which on the women's side was actually won by Ruth Arston. I think Lucy Charles Barkley was up there as well. But it seemed like they had some technical difficulties because we didn't see any more results coming from those guys. Next, it was the run. And there were four athletes on the women's side who got under the, the allocated time for maximum points. And that included Meredith Kessler, Beth Potter, and Melanie Mora. And then finished off on the crit race and those three athletes were battling it out and they ended up finishing in the overall of week three with Meredith Kessler first, Beth Potter second and Melanie Mora third. Well, well over on the men's side and in the individual TT and the hill climb it was Matt Hansen that took the win there and then on the run we had eight men under that fastest time band and then the final race the crit race was won by Anthony Costas meaning that Anthony took the overall win for week three with Kenneth van der Rijska in second an exact repeat and rep replica of the previous week, but this time with Jackson Laundry taking third. All right, it's picture time now. And actually, we're starting off with a video, having said that. This one's been sent in by Christian um, under the bike description. I don't swim with my bike because it's a video of him swimming in Copenhagen. And he says the pools might be closed, but most of the ice has drifted out. A chance not to be missed. Um, I think I might miss that chance. It's going to be pretty cold, isn't it? I, I can imagine now in Scandinavia right now, it's going to be very cold. Um, next one, a photo sent in by Carl Nino. He's on his Planet X Stealth Pro Carbon. And yeah, just getting super aero and a lovely shot with some, wow, it's going past some nice fields behind. And now we are going down under because we've got someone racing in a tri suit enjoying the sunshine. Um, it's Paul in Adelaide, Australia. And he says competing in the Glen Elg Swim Run Festival. Although he does say unseasonably cool and a rough sea conditions, uh, considering it's an Adelaide summer, but it was great to get out there and race again. Yep, um, we are very jealous. Yeah, <laughs> and when you say cool, uh, yeah. yeah. It, we know straight off that it's from Australia or New Zealand because, well, you are just in a tri suit. Yeah, you wouldn't see that here. <laughs> Um, and then finally from Benedict Jose, or Jose, um, this is from Subic Bay, their multi-sport gang, the JU multi-sport team on their last race uh, we had together before the COVID lockdown. And you're looking very happy and full of spirit. So yeah, thank you ever so much to everyone for sending in your photos. We'd love to see more. Get those pain caves sent in, what you're up to, training, new bikes, any projects you've been up to, please keep sending them in using the photo upload link on screen right now or in the description just down below. Right now for the caption competition, and we had a fantastic photo from the Olympic Games from Hyde Park in London um, from 2012. And yeah, a load of ducks moving past. So fantastic captions coming in. First one from Phil Patterson said, thought we'd have a quack at the triathlon and we took it like ducks to the water. Oh, that was, I mean, they're all really good this week. Uh, another run up here, right, uh, Yeltsner says, that's a quacking pace. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Uh, Yannick, who I think we've, had quite a few from before. I think they're very witty and good with their <laughs> captions said, uh, got to get your ducks in a row before getting into T1. Very good. 
Yeah, well, our winner this week, though, is Patrick Rays with this one. Keep drafting and you may be penalised for foul play. <laughs> I love that. It's so good. Uh, well, now for this week's caption comp photo. And also, Patrick, obviously, get in touch. We'll send a cap out to you. But this week's caption comp photo is from Carlo Viveri, which is renowned for ridiculous dives because it's a, a looped swim. So you've got to dive in a couple of times. So here it is. Get your captions sent in, pop them in the comment section down below. And that is it for the show this week. We do have tons coming up on the channel. We are debating time versus distance for your running, which I've been asked about a lot. I don't know about yourself. What do you go with? Well, I actually made this video and it's quite interesting because I use both all the time. Yeah. I have to change them. Me too, and for different reasons, mm. so... Yeah, not just like, oh, what I feel like today. It's kind of, there is reasons for yeah. what I do. Yeah, so check that video <laughs> out. And also we have a fantastic update coming from Dan Lloyd with his half marathon training plan. Yeah, and it's if you were looking for some clothes at the moment, last week I mentioned about the GTN shop having loads of t-shirts, which you don't get to see very often because I'm always wearing a jumper. Well, Mark is kindly today sporting one of them. So do go and check out the great selection we've got. The link is on the screen now. Talking of links on the screen, do hit that globe to subscribe and if you've enjoyed the show give us a like and there's a couple of videos for you to take a look at now if you've not yet seen the downhill mile where Mark got well I can't really say much more he was aiming for the sub four minute mile you've got to watch it to find out if he got there and then we've also got a swimming video on swimming tips to improve your swim stroke